Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Chen, and I teach fourth grade, and I'm going to read you a very special book today. Today I'd like to read to you a story called Simon's Hook, a story about teases and put downs. This is a really great story for um, kids to hear and read about on what to say in situations where they feel like they're being put down or they're being disrespected. So here we go. It was a bad hair day for Simon. First his sister lost her gum, and then she found it in his hair. When she tried to fix it, she went snip, snip, and a big chunk of his hair was gone. He grabbed his hat and ran outside, hoping no one would see. No one did see until Simon fell and lost his hat. That's when Joey yelled, what happened to your hair? Everyone turned to look. Who cut it? Nicole asked. What did they use? A lawn mower, Miguel said as he laughed. Hey, lawn mower head, Joey said. Simon grabbed, Simon grabbed his hat and started to leave. I've got to go home, he said, and he stomped away. I've got chores to do. Don't forget to cut the lawn, said Nicole. Everyone laughed, everyone but Simon. Simon ran and ran. He ran until he couldn't see his friends anymore. Why do they make fun of me, he yelled. Why don't they just leave me alone? Simon was so mad he didn't see Grandma Rose until he ran into her. Whoa, she cried. What's the hurry? I'm going home, Simon cried. Why, asked Grandma Rose. What's wrong? I'm having a bad day, said Simon. A bad hair day. What's wrong with your hair, she asked. Simon took off his hat. Oh, said Grandma Rose, I see. Simon told her about the gum and his sister's haircut. Then he told her what happened in the park. Hmm, that's too bad, she said. Yeah, and they'll tease me again, said Simon, and I, and I don't know what to do. Grandma Rose shook her head. You do have a problem. And then she asked him something really strange. But why did you bite? Bite, cried Simon. I didn't bite anyone. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I know you don't mean by anyone, she said. Um, she said, what, what I mean is, well, wait here. I'll be back in a minute. Grandma Rose disappeared into her garage, and then she returned. She was wearing a fishing outfit. At the end of her fishing line was a piece of paper. What is she doing? First she talks about biting. Now she's going fishing. You see, Simon, Grandma Rose said as she cast her line, when people tease you, it's like they're throwing out a hook to see if you'll chase it and bite. Oh, Simon said as he watched the hook fly through the air. Now I know what you're doing. This is a lesson. That's right, said Grandma Rose with a wink. It's a fishing lesson. Today they made fun of your hair, she said, and she dangled the hook in front of Simon. They called you lawnmower head, and you bit. I sure did, he said. Well then, said Grandma Rose, grab the hook. Lawn mower head. Grandma Rose pulled Simon around the patio. I've caught you, she said. You're not free. You're not a free fish anymore. But what else can I do? At, cried Simon as he flew through the yard. Grandma Rose put her fishing pole aside and sat down. Well, I know a story that might help, she said. It's a fish story. Would you like to hear it? Sure, said Simon. Grandma Rose took a sip of lemonade and began to talk. Once upon a time, there was a fishing, a famous fishing spot. People came from miles around to tease the fish with their hooks. When the fish bit, the people would see them reel in. Many fish were caught. You look weird. Who asked you? Bummer. Don't bite. Na, 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 you can't get me. I'll show you, I'll bite your hook off. There goes another fish. When will they learn? These fish are biting at everything. Boy, this is easy. Let me go. Droopy eyes. Stop it. There goes Matt. There goes Jen. Ha, I've got you. No, you don't. Do you have a king? Go fish. The fish watched as their friends were caught. Soon there were no fish left. They had learned not to bite, and they had to learn fast. So they talked to the older fish. They talked about to the sea creatures too. They asked questions. They took notes. They studied hooks that, and they learned. How do you keep from biting all these years? What's your secret? 
you could just ignore the hooks. I sure hope these fish learn not to bite. Me too. Just play it cool. Can you help us? What can we do? Now class, this is what we learn. Instead of biting, do little or nothing. Don't react. Agree with the hook. Distract the fisherman. Change the subject. Laugh or make a joke. Stay away from the hooks. Swim in a different part of the sea. The first idea they had was to do very little or nothing. Don't react to the hooks. I can beat you. Cool. Why chase those hooks? Just ignore them and stay and just ignore them and stay free. Your mother is a big fat tuna. Hey you two, don't you see this hook? Sure, but we just ignore it. It's your turn. You have you you have mossy fins. Thanks for telling me. Just glance at the hook, then go back to what you are doing. Hooks are no big deal unless you make them a big deal. Boy, you're a big deal, though. Hey, four eyes. Did you say something? The second idea they had was to agree with the hook. That was a dumb joke. It sure was. Here comes, here comes fish breath. That's me. Just don't argue with them. You, you're caught in the seaweed. Yep. This is a dumb sea. You don't have to totally agree. You can just agree that it could be true. It could be. Do you really think so? Nah, but why argue? You're slower than polyrogs. You're probably right. Sometimes we are. The third idea was to distract their fishermen or change the subject. Stubby fins, stubby fins. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's... What's up there? Nothing. I'm just trying to distract the fishermen. You miss me. You miss me. What I really miss is my seaweed house. I built it last year, and then the waves washed it away. It was the neatest house, blah, 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 blah. All right already. We don't know the need to know your whole life story. Just point out, just point at something or talk about something else. You flunked fish school. I'll be back in a second. I got to go to the bathroom. Baby, baby, baby. How's the weather up there? Shh, he's just changing the subject. Fish don't use bathrooms. The fourth idea was to laugh or make a or joke about the hooks. That's so you big old whale. Honk honk, whale coming through. Shrimp. I thought I was a turtle. Scaredy cat, scaredy cat. Yikes, did someone say cat? How stupid can you be? Real stupid. Yuck, you've got purple cooties. Oh no, purple cooties? Far out, purple spots. I don't listen to what they say. I just smile at them. I like this idea the best. It's my favorite too. Laugh at yourself or the hook. Don't make fun of the fishermen. The fifth idea was to stay away. Swim in another part of the sea. You talk funny. You lost. Hey, warp face. What's going on over there? Let's go see. Oh, someone's throwing hooks. Nah, just stay away. I'm staying here. Come, let's play ball. Freckle face, you're so ugly. Look at the sharp hook. Come on, let's swim in another part of the sea. What you can do instead what can you do instead of swimming near near hooks? We can play hide and seek in the seaweed. I can read a book. We can pick up trash. I can swim with the minnows. Now fish don't bite. They don't even chase hooks. The don't chase hooks. Groovy, we're free. Yay, we pass. We're too smart to bite. I'm so proud. So sorry to see you go. Bye-bye. These fish don't bite anymore. Let's go somewhere else. And your mother's a big fat tuna too. Now, now, honey, don't throw hooks at them. He needs to go back to fish school. Grandma Rose leaned back and smiled. And that's how the fish learned to stay free, she said. Simon thought, Simon thought. He thought about the hooks and the fish. He thought about how the fish learned not to bite. Then he said, they can tease me all they want. I don't bite. I'm not going, I'm going to be a free fish too. Good for you, said Grandma Rose. Simon jumped up and ran to the playground. He couldn't wait for someone to say something about his hair. He didn't have to wait long. And Simon ran up. Someone yelled, hey, lawnmower head. Oh, hey, lawnmower head is back. Yep, I'm back, said Simon. How's the hair, Miguel asked. It's still on my head, said Simon. At least what's left of it, Simon and Miguel laughed. Did you mow the lawn, Nicole said? No way, Simon cried. It might end up looking like this. And he pointed to, and he said, he said pointing to his head. Now everyone laughed. 
Come on, let's play, said Joey, and he threw Simon the ball. Simon was a free fish. Can you be a free fish? See how many different ways you can answer these hooks without biting. You've got a boyfriend. You've got a bird girlfriend. You get caught in a tuna fish net. What's that supposed to be? Loser. Chicken. You can't get away from me. Ha 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 ha. Cheater. Hey, lizard lips. Can't you do anything? Can't you do any better than that? You could try doing little or nothing. Agree. Distract. Laugh or stay away. It's up to you. Be free. Grandma Rose's Free Fish Poem. When people tease you, there's much you can do. As Grandma Rose says, it's up to you. You can do very little or some, sometimes agree. And maybe you could just say that about me. Try to distract them or laugh with them too, or just stay away. Maybe what's best for you. There are many ideas to choose from, you see. When you learn not to bite, you learn to swim free. Poor me, I had a bite. No, you didn't. There's a lot of other choices. If you bite, people will throw more hooks. And here are the cast of um, characters. And here is a special note to parents and teachers. I hope you enjoyed this story. I want you to think about this question. What would you do or say if someone says something that's disrespectful to you? Do you plan to ignore it? Do you plan to agree with it? Do you plan to laugh it off or distract the reader or do little or nothing? Your answer is up to you.